What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna to talk about Square's Cash App and how this could drive broader growth for the company. I think Cash App is a real sort of under the radar disruptor of the FinTech banking system um, that has huge potential for Square that not enough, the stock market isn't really realizing. Um, I don't think people have, have caught on to how big of a business opportunity this is. I was looking on Twitter recently, um, saw some data from ARK Invest showing that Cash App had recently surpassed Venmo in terms of monthly active users, um, hitting nearly 30 million uh, monthly active users this chart is really awesome, shows that the Cash App's MAUs have now surpassed Venmo. Even though they're both growing, Venmo um, just growing a little bit slower. They also support this with some Google Trends data um, showing that the Cash App is really blowing up and has also surpassed Venmo. Um, so now we've, we're talking about tens of millions of people using it. Revenue from the Cash App is exploding. It makes up more than 10% of Square's business now. Um, if you include the Bitcoin purchasing, it's over 20% of Square's business. And I think this is, um, we're tapping into a much bigger future for Square. Um, so anyway, I want to dive into all of that for this video, um, but starting at a high level, I think uh, Square is an interesting company led by Jack Dorsey, a huge fan of him. He's also the CEO of Twitter, of course, um, but Square has been sort of developing two businesses at once for a long time now. Um, they have their core Square payment terminal, which you've probably seen at your local artisanal coffee shop to buy a croissant. You can just swipe your credit card. They made it super easy for small businesses to basically digitize um, their cashier, accept credit cards, um, you know, keep all their accounting and stuff, and they've launched a ton of different services on top of that, like Square Capital. Um, which has seen nice, slow, and steady growth where they actually lend their businesses money because they have insights into all this payment data. But anyway, the point is Square is this really cool payments company um, for small businesses, which is them ena enable them to take new types of payment. But the other sort of side hustle that Square has launched um, in recent years that has just totally blown up, become a huge business in its own right, is this cash app, basically a way to send money in between uh, different friends for free. Um, really simple use case to start out, but it's expanded into way more than that. Um, and I think it was sort of like a side hustle for the company, like a random project, but now it's turning into a huge business opportunity. Eventually, I see this huge synergy for Square to build sort of this new next generation digital bank um, and merge what they're doing with consumers on the cash app and small businesses um, with you know their, their payment terminal. And we're already starting to see that with like a Square debit card and things like that. But I just think Square is so, so early in a very, very long-term uh, vision to totally reinvent and digitize uh, the financial services and payments economy. And so amazing founder, amazing product. Product. Now let's dive into why now is such an exciting time for Cash App um, because I think the business is really hitting its stride. So beyond just growing past Venmo, um, one thing I really want to focus on for Cash App is the product innovation. This is what has personally impressed me. The first time I heard of Cash App, I was like, okay, so they're copying Venmo. Like, big deal. Is this going to blow up? Probably not. Like, Venmo already exists. Anyway, totally wrong. Um, since launching in 2014, they've had an absurd, like just really rapid pace of innovation. And this is what has impressed me the most and more and more of why I'm convinced that Cash App will win. And it's a really interesting example of why company culture matters so much. PayPal buys out Venmo. Innovation starts stalling at the company the second they get bought out by a bigger, more bureaucratic firm. And as that happens, what product innovation stalls, user growth slow, all of a sudden Cash App has taken the lead and surge because of Venmo's stagnation. But anyway, Let's dive into this. So they launched in tw late 2014, um, basically allowing you to send um, businesses in between friends. Um, they had an annualized P2P payment volume of a billion dollars and already in March uh, 2015, which is pretty epic. They launched their Apple Watch app. I guess they slowly started monetizing with a 1% instant deposit fee in 2016, 1 million in quarterly revenue in 2016. So this is a very, very new business. Um, they, in May 2017, they actually launched that physical uh, cash card. One of the biggest things I wanna point to here is when they launched Bitcoin ATM, or basically the, the ability to buy and sell Bitcoin within the app. Um, Square actually even started breaking out Bitcoin revenue um, on their financial statements. We'll get to that in a second. But the point is they were sort of expanding beyond peer-to-peer -peer payments saying, wait, now you can actually keep your money in the Cash App, start investing it. Um, and this was a very interesting move and a key sneak preview at what Cash App is, ex is up, going to be up to in the future. And recently, um, they even launched uh, this ability to invest. I thought this was really cool. I hit their website. They have this really awesome explainer, but now it's not just Bitcoin that you can invest in, but it's literally the stock market. And they're even breaking this down with really cool like pictures and educational content. Um, I was a huge, huge fan of this. And I think this is still kind of an early, very early or beta phase, um, but the Cash App now launches you literally basically becoming a Robinhood competitor overnight, which makes me sort of a lot less bullish on Robinhood, um, but the ability to buy and sell stocks, not only um, you know on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, but you don't even have to pay the price per share. They'll even slice up 
Uh, they'll even let you buy part. They'll even let you buy partial shares, so you can even put in you know 10, 20 bucks into Apple, despite the share price being three hundred dollars. I think that's a key way to remove friction, um, increase engagement, especially if you think that uh, you know Square's demographic here is a lot younger. Um, they're getting these younger people into investing now, not just Bitcoin but stocks. I see this as you know really quietly becoming sort of this next generation millennial app bank. Um, when you think about what they're doing from a marketing standpoint, this is what has blown me away, and a reason why um, you know Ark Invest is so pumped at them and why their marketing has gone real viral. They've started been backing TikTok influencers, which is something that's way I took way too old to understand. But they um, teamed up, or I guess um, I guess they teamed up with this guy called Shiggy, who put out a song called Cash App. Um, that had 136.5 million views with the hashtag cash app that money. So they're paying these TikTok influencers to spread the word. I mean, we all know or have been hearing about how TikTok has been totally blowing up. I just clicked on the hyperlink here and it showed that cash app with the Shiggy song has 10.1 thousand videos I guess that have been uploaded using the song. I think that's what that means. And it's not just the Shiggy song. There's a ton of other rap songs that are even popping up with Cash App just naturally and organically in the lyrics. So I think that's pretty crazy. Um, but anyway, this is contributing to the viral growth and it is, is becoming a reason that this is sort of the go-to app for Gen Z when you talk about banking, getting these you know younger consumers into financial services, educating them about the stock market. Uh, really, really cool, fascinating stuff. And, and moving back to product innovation, another thing they just launched, now competing with TransferWise, which is another, I believe, billion dollar plus startup, um, is the ability to send money to the UK with zero foreign exchange fees. This is totally disruptive. They must be losing money on this, but now you can basically send someone in the UK money as well. Now let's move into the financials of Cash App because this is where for me, I want to nerd out and it gets really, really fascinating. This is in Square's Q4 uh, 2019 shareholder letter, which I'll put a link to in the description. But as you can see, Cash App monthly active users um, growing really nicely and rapidly here, 7 million to 15 million to 24 million. Um, they also go in active revenue per customer, excluding Bitcoin, going up dramatically as well, up to 30 bucks, um, doubling in the past two years. And then we can dive into the financials here. Total net revenue on the Cash App growing 147%. Uh, gross profit growing 104%, um, monthly active users growing 60% year over year, um, daily active users are even growing faster than that, up 80% year over year, so that, that was extremely impressive. Um, this is as they're launching a ton of new products. Here they highlight that investing product that I was mentioning, saying the average customer is buying about $20 of stocks every time they make a purchase. This is growing engagement in the Cash App ecosystem. I think this has huge potential. Robin, like you can see Cash App literally becoming all of the, you know, transfer wise, like I was saying, Robinhood. Um, these are all multi-billion dollar Venmo payment startups that Cash App is slowly becoming bigger than and eating up. And I think justifying uh, even just beyond the revenue, you know, a multi-billion dollar valuation just for Cash App. Anyway, diving into those financials, um, revenue for the fourth quarter of 2019 um, was 361 million for the Cash App, up 147%, gross profit 144 million, up 104%. Bitcoin has become a huge part of that, which is a much lower gross margin. Um, so excluding that, revenue was 183 uh, million, up 96% year over year. So Square's Q4 revenue overall was just 1.3 billion. Uh, Cash App, excluding Bitcoin, was 180 million. That's like almost 15% of Square's net revenues. So this is actually becoming a huge material piece of the business. And I think as an opportunity to grow revenue significantly, significantly going forward. Um, they also, even just the Bitcoin thing, I think as well, is, is going to be a huge driver. But anyway, so the financials under the hood of Cash App, we're talking about, you know, a monthly active users growing at 60% at 24 million. I mean, if this was like a social network, you'd be like, wow, they're crushing it. This is huge. You know, uh, daily active usage up 80%. These are incredible numbers. And um, diving into the 10K, we got a little more clarity um, onto the, the size of the amount of deposits in this. Because I was like, okay, they have all these accounts. How much money is actually in Square um, in the Cash? App. They say here at the end of 2019, they had $676 million um, in on deposit stored balances from customers, an increase of 102% year over year. So, you know, taking a step back, we have Square, Square's Cash App growing like crazy, already almost $700 million deposited within that app, like this digital virtual bank, soon to have billions of dollars and, you know, already having tens of millions of customers here emerging. I think there's a huge business opportunity to reinvent what, you know, Gen Z and millennials want their bank to be in the relationship with their bank in the future. Um, you know, I use Bank of America and all, I think a lot of people still use a lot of these legacy institutions, but we sort of have this new wave of next generation apps and digitally native products like Square, like Venmo, like Robinhood, like the app called Public that, that was Matador that I did a video about, you know, all these quirky little cool companies 
are popping up and becoming new digital banks. And I think these have, you know, tens and tens of billions of dollars of potential because you think about the relationships they're building with these super young consumers, I think could last a lifetime and square, you know, the pace of innovation here. They're becoming their, your broker. They're becoming your international transfer money agent. They're becoming, you know, your crypto broker as well, which wasn't even a thing. You know, these are all massive businesses that Square is quietly and slowly tackling um, and going viral with at the same time on TikTok. So I'm just a huge fan of this, jumping into hypercharts just to look at Square's overall business and how Cash App ties in. Um, I actually came like this, literally like this close to buying uh, Square stock today, but I didn't because of another reason of another video, totally unrelated to Square that I'm gonna make soon. But I am a huge fan of this company. I've made a bunch of videos about them in the past, but I just think they're, they're poised to be so much bigger. So anyway, take a look at the stock. Um, it hit huge highs, um, almost $100 per share uh, about a year and a half ago when Cash App, remember, was just like 7 million users, way smaller, 10 million users, um, you know, has exploded since then. Uh, but I think the valuation just got way too high, out of control since then. The financials have been uh, doing well, but the stock is actually pulling back, you know, on this whole coronavirus fears. The, the chart looks crazy, down to $70. I think it's down like 7% today. Yeah. Anyway, bloodbath in the markets. But market capitalization, $31 billion, I think, for the digital bank of the future. Um, this is actually a very cheap, reasonable valuation. But anyway, the main metric we have for Square is gross payment volume. This is more um, for those sellers that I talked about, the merchants that actually accept credit cards, Square's old business, or you know, it's still their new huge business. But um, that's what that is, gross payment volume, one of their metrics. This is my favorite chart, breaking down the revenue segments. Um, of Square, you can go to hypercharts.co uh, slash SQ, Square's symbol, if you wanna follow along here. But we have the transaction revenue, which is you know from all those payments. That's the blue line, their main revenue. Then where they categorize Cash App here is subscription and services. So um, and this is without the Bitcoin piece. And so this is actually interesting because there's some other stuff in subscription and services and they just divested from Caviar um, Square actually sold Caviar to DoorDash for a couple hundred million bucks. Um, that happened in Q4. That was originally in their subscription and services revenue. So that's why that revenue looks like the growth slowed out of nowhere. That's just because they removed that Caviar revenue, but growth is still actually going to be on fire for this segment going forward, mostly because it's Cash App. Cash App, 180 million of revenue here. We're looking at 280 million overall. So Cash App, more than 50% of the subscription and services revenue. We tie into that on top of Bitcoin, which is also 100% Cash App revenue. Um, this is where people are buying and selling Bitcoin um, on the app, but it's seen huge huge popularity. You know, Jack Dorsey, uh, the CEO of Square, is a huge fan and proponent of Bitcoin. Um, I've actually have bought a little bit of Bitcoin recently in the past couple weeks because I'm a huge fan of Bitcoin. Um, and I actually think that the fact that the CEO of one of the largest payment companies in the world that I think is poised to be a huge disruptor in the future of the payments industry, Square and Cash App, the fact that the CEO of that, Jack Dorsey, loves Bitcoin. I mean, I think that is a huge, huge reason to be excited about Bitcoin. We're talking about tens of millions of people potentially using Bitcoin um, as Cash App continues to grow. I mean, this could single-handedly drive material adoption of the cryptocurrency. But anyway, that's another story. Um, I think Square is, and if you think about what Square does, you know, they're, every time you swipe a credit card in the Square terminal, you know, they're losing about 3% of that payment or a huge chunk of it. Um, you know, that artisanal cafe isn't getting it, Square isn't getting it, it's going to Visa for payment processing. That 3% fee, you know, going across tens of billions of dollars on Square's network is a huge amount of capital. If Square can move that, you know, cost or friction to process a payment from 3% to 1.5%, um, and, and they still could even capture a bigger margin because they leverage a new technology like Bitcoin, you can see why this is such an exciting piece of the business and why, Jack, um, is, is invested in Bitcoin, why is invested in a company called Lightning Labs to build layer two solutions for Bitcoin to accelerate the adoption there and make it more um, easy to do peer-to-peer -peer payments. Anyway, the, my point is all of these puzzle pieces are swirling of the future digital banking economy. Bitcoin, Square, and Cash App are one of them. And um, Square is already seeing hundreds of millions of dollars in Bitcoin revenue, as you can see here in the green. But anyway, the point is overall, if we go to the financials of Square, rapidly growing. I mean, I'm talking about them, you know, kicking ass. And you can see here in the financials, 1.3 billion in revenue. This is even including that divestment of caviar. Growth has been solid. Gross profit growth also booming as well as that revenue continues to be more and more profitable. From an operating income standpoint, they went from losing money to now they're actually profitable, making money. I expect them to kind of operate at break even for a long time going forward because they're probably going to start investing like crazy. But to see them uh, produce positive operating income, an awesome sign, um, sort of next phase of Square's business here. Just wanted to go down, go down here to growth. So they did divest caviar, so that's why growth slowed a little bit, but we're still talking about a company growing 41%. Um, I think it's very hard to find companies growing that fast, especially with 1.3 billion in revenue. Let's go to an annual view here really quick. Um, just to show you the, the revenue profile then. But I mean, Square is becoming an explosive business of 4.7 billion in 2019 revenue up from under 100 million uh, just five years ago or six years ago. So 
quietly becoming like this next generation banking company and the growth rate is still solid mid 40 percent 42.9 percent even though that's slowed because of the growth of caviar so if square can keep up growing at you know 30 35 percent for years to come i think the stock is going to do really well and i think cash app single-handedly could drive that revenue meaningful revenue growth for square for years and years to come but anyway, I don't own Square stock. I kind of wish I did. I'm getting a little FOMO for making this episode, um, but I'm a huge fan of the company and I think I just cannot stress enough how Cash App is quietly becoming this huge disruptor. They're becoming a brokerage like Robinhood, transfer international tr payments, transfer company like TransferWise. Uh, they're doing peer-to-peer -peer payments better than Venmo is. I mean, this is, I, I would say Cash App, you know, even though their re revenue run rate, even with Bitcoin, what, 1.5 billion a year already, you know, and growing at, you know, over 100%, I think Cash App could easily be justifiably alone worth nine. 9, 10, you know, $15 billion. So that's almost half of Square's value as a company just coming from Cash App alone and soon could be justified the entire market cap of Square with literally just Cash App. And when we're talking about a banking infrastructure where you, you store your savings, you're investing in your stocks and tens of millions of people are using it. I mean, that is a digital bank that to me is worth 50 to $100 billion potentially in the long run, especially as these consumers grow into the app and move more and more of their savings there. So anyway, huge potential, very excited about what Cash App has in store and their pace of innovation once again, like this is just nobody has beaten this in the financial services app space. Um, they're moving the fastest. And I think that's the reason why they're going to continue to win and gain market share. Anyway, this is HyperChange. Huge shout out to our Patreon producers, fun in the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below about Square, Cash App, all that stuff. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.